Signs of the time. We've got a bunch of them going on. You want to really play, pay close attention. I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, to Psalms 19. Psalms 19, with that word of wisdom from our Father. And Psalms 19 reads, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. You can look around you and see it here on earth. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Are you aware of it? Do you ever enjoy our Father's creation? Do you read the signs He gives us? It's just like you have signs of global warming every spring. <laughs> it turns, okay. Verse 3. There is no speech nor language which their voice is not heard. You know, you have to... Every planet, every constellation has its name in a different language. But everybody knows it. Verse 4. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. He arranged it all. This is what he said to poor old Job in chapter 38. Hey, I put it all up there. What do you think you are? Listening to a bunch of fruitcakes? You get all messed up. You want to listen to your father. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. You should recognize Orion right there. Orion is the coming of Messiah, the strong man, the man that's able to get it on. He'll be coming up again in the lecture tonight. Verse 6. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The bridegroom's coming. Uh, are you going to take part in the wedding? It's coming. It sure is. And it's right at the door. The law of the Lord is perfect. Don't ever let anyone tell you different. Perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony. That's the truth of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. I mean, even children can understand the power and the majesty of Almighty God. The statutes. That's the ordinances of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment, that's the law of the Lord, is pure. Enlightening the eyes. It gives you eyes to see and ears to hear. And you're able to comprehend and know and to understand. The fear of the Lord, that reverence, is clean, enduring forever. The judgments, and He is the judge, of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. They're always fair, and you can count on it. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Verse 11, to complete. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Are you able to take a warning when you see one? I mean, they're out there. And the warnings are there. The signs are pure. The signs are simple. Open your Bibles, Minor Prophets, the book of Amos, chapter 5. Amos, chapter 5. God in this chapter 5, is He's not happy with the majority of Israel. Very happy with His elect very unhappy with most of the children, especially non-believers. Chapter 5, the book of Amos. Hear this word. I'm sorry, I'm in 4. Verse 5. Chapter 5. Hear ye this word which I take up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. This, this is a sad song. If you're a non-believer, it's a sad song unless you love him. 
the virgin of Israel has fallen. I mean, that, that bridegroom is expecting a virgin bride. She's not, in large part. She shall no more arise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. Well, we're going to try. But the odds at this time are pretty slim except for God's elect. There's a many, many people going to be saved, but there's a lot more people that are going to be deceived and are, in fact, are deceived already. That virgin bride, well, let's listen to it. Verse 3, For thus saith the Lord God, The city that went out by a thousand shall leave an hundred. That's ten percent only. And that which went forth by an hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. Ten percent. That's about all you can count on. And that's good. That's good to have that ten percent. It's good to have God's elect that see truth in the simplicity that is in his word. Verse four. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and you shall live. It's that simple. You know, why can't a hundred percent hear that message? They should. It's that simple. His love pours forth, but man is a strange creature. They like to chase dreams. They like to be misled. They seem to enjoy it. They seem to swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Verse 5. But seek not Bethel. You're going to learn a lot right here. Well, what's Bethel? It's the house of God. You want to be careful what church you go to seeking God. You may not find him there because he won't attend a lot of them. Nor enter into Gilgal. There's truth in this. We'll, we'll cover it. And pass not to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel, the house of God, shall come to naught. Bethel, house of nothing. If, if God's word isn't taught there, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, why would you want to go there? Because it's God's word that counts. Gilgal was the first place that Passover was held after they crossed the Jordan where the twelve stones were placed. Beersheba is all the way to the south. That means from the north to the south. You know, you're, you, it's all the same. In other words, the house of Israel, the, the believers are so far off base that probably you're not going to find the truth at Bethel. So you might as well not go there. Now, I, it's always go to church. If you think that's what I'm teaching, you're mistaken. But this is God's word. If you're looking for truth, you might be hard-pressed to find it there, okay? But God may send you there to help find truth there. Got it? Seek, verse 6, seek the Lord and you shall live. Lest you break out, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. But he's always got his elect, those that he can count on. Those that follow him, those that love him, those he can depend on. All over the world, believers willing to make a stand, stand for truth and understanding. Verse 7, ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth. That, that's to say, you that, um, wormwood is bitterness. You let bitterness into your judgment, your discernment. You don't want to do that. If, if you're truly studying God's Word, there's reward there. There's happiness. There's righteousness. Always. Always fair. Verse 8, sharpen up for me. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion... Turneth the shadows of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, the people, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. In Appendix 12 in your companion Bibles, check out Orion. What, is, what does it symbolize? The coming of Messiah. 
What he's saying is you look for the coming of Messiah, for he is Messiah. He is the truth. And seven spiritual completeness, God's elect, the battle axe that God uses to bring truth and understanding for those. You know, God can take the 10% and get it done and send the rest home for a while. Don't need them. Just give, give me just a few good men and women. And we'll get it done. Okay, why? Because we've got God with us, and when God is with us, who can be against us? So don't ever feel alone when you have the Father on your side. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But I want you to know he sets the stage here for Orion. He wants you to look up. He has ways of giving signs and leadership and understanding. And the seven spiritual completeness. The seven eyes and the seven ears, the stone of destiny that hear the truth, that hold that plumb bob straight and level, that truth can always abound. Again, those of you that are unfamiliar with that, it's Appendix 12 in your companion Bible. Okay. Verse 9, that strengtheneth the spoil against the strong so that the spoil shall come across against the fortress. They get all kind of, all hoped up, you know. The enemy can sure get big ideas. Ten, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. That's, that's, the gate is the judgment seat. You know where a good attorney is and a good judge? And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. They, they'd rather rook somebody, operate behind closed doors, lie to the people, mislead them. And so it is. They crooked judges that will not attain to the rightful law of Almighty God. And taking bribes to boot. Verse 11, For as much therefore as your uh, treading is upon the poor, and you take from him him burdens of wheat, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink wine in them. God always evens the score. You may think a lot of people are getting away with a lot of things today. Don't worry, they're not. It's all, all going to come home to roost, big time. Crookedness never pays off and God will not allow it. There's always that day of reckoning and the evening up. Okay. Verse 12, For I know your manifold transgressions, And your mighty sins that afflict the just, they take a bribe and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. They, I mean, tantalize the poor, taking away their dignity, their respect, to be able to, you know, you can't take care of yourself, you need me. I, you know, I, a man or a woman that can't take care of themselves, um, and, and I'm not talking about handicapped people, then if somebody comes along and peddles you a bill of goods and puts you on welfare, they're robbing you of your dignity, your respect. A can-do type person put in a condition like that, people taking bribes, harnessing unfair uh, straw count on those that make brick. I'm going all the way back to Egypt, remember? That's the way they work. Overloading the people with taxation. Promises that are false. Be very careful, my friend. But then, God knows. He's keeping score. Never worry, never fear. Verse 13, therefore the prudent, that's to say the wise and the just, shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. You know when to speak. You're a priest of God. You go for the juggler, if you would, of Satan himself, the enemy. That's who you go for. Okay. Verse 15, hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. 
It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. That's to say to God's elect. He always is. He always fulfills his promises. Verse 16, Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, Wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandman to mourning, and shall and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. Remember, there's going to be a sad day. You, you want to get set for this. What he's telling you is that 90% that doesn't hear the truth, they're going to be a bunch of sad sacks when they see what's truly happening. There's nothing you can do about it. They're just going to cry. And that's good for them to recognize truth and to see it. As God's work goes down. Verse 17, And in all vineyards shall be wailing, and I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. He's going to do it. 18, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you the day of the Lord is darkness and not light? Well, whoever said that? I thought the day of the Lord was a wonderful time. Christ was coming. Messiah is returning. Not if you're a non-believer, it's not a good day. If you're a non-believer, it's not light, it's dark. Why? He's, he's after your case. You may think, well, I thought I was a Christian. Well, who were you worshiping before the true Christ returned? Well, I thought it was the true Christ. Now, thoughts won't cut it. He wrote you a letter telling you truth for you to understand and to absorb. And what is your excuse? Well, I just didn't get around to reading the letter. Well, you must not love him. Because it's a letter sent to you, warning you about the, the um, chronology of the events of the end times, exactly how it would be. So these 90% say, oh, the Lord's coming. And then when it really happens, he says, it's not going to be a good day for you. 19, as if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. In other words, he's going to act like there's just no way out. And if you've been in bed with the serpent, what can you expect? Verse 20, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness? And not light, question, even every, even very dark and no brightness in it. You don't want to go there, beloved. You want to see that light because Christ is light to you. But these that worship the false Christ, it is darkness. It's a dark day. They'll be praying for death. Not a good day at all. This is why we strive to help them, to lead them, to give them that truth whereby they can see that light and find understanding and happiness one and for all. Verse 21, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. You can burn all the incense you want to, and it's not in my nostrils, it stinks. If you're worshiping somebody other than the true God, he's jealous. I mean, wouldn't you be? If your mate or one of somebody that you really, really loved, if they, they started messing around with another belief or something or other people and ignored you, you'd be jealous. Well, so is our Father. He has feelings. And He loves you. And you, they hurt Him when they turn aside from Him. He does not like. 22. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not ac accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Don't want it. Well, what does he want? Hosea 6, 6, he wants your love. He wants you to love him, not somebody else. 23, you're going to get down to what the main problem is here in a moment, so you want to hang on, be sharp for me. 23, 
Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of your vi- thy vows. I, I, I don't want to hear your harps. I don't want to hear your songs if you're singing them to somebody else. You might say, well, I, I don't understand. Well, how would you feel if the one you really loved was singing a love song to somebody else? Oh, I'd make my day. I bet it would. Okay. Well, it doesn't make our Father's Day either, okay? 24. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. It's going to, because our Father is the judge. And he always gets it right, right on course. 25, have you offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? That 40 years of one generation, and here it's the generation of the fig tree. What have you offered me when you're looking for the day of the Lord? You're going around looking to not even study God's word to fly away? To where? Our father has a lot of patience, but at the same time, he's a jealous father. Here's why we came here. I want you to sharpen up for me real good. 26. But you have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch. Do you know what this word Moloch is? It's king. You have followed the tabernacle of your king. Well, I thought God was supposed to be our king. I thought Christ was king of kings and Lord of lords. He's supposed to be. But for that 90%, he's not. Well, what is their king? And Cain, your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. What is he talking about? Well, you'd have to go to several languages if you were to catch up with the Septuagint. And to know what their king truly is. Or, let's go one more verse. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Naturally, what's beyond Damascus? Babylon. Okay. And if you were to read Acts chapter 7, verse 43, it's reported as Babylon. Only, instead of Cain, it's Raphan which is the translation in another language from the Septuagint. Okay. So what's it talking about? Well, have, you, have you forgotten about Isaiah 14? Hold your place here for a moment. But have you forgotten about Isaiah 14? What does Isaiah 14 say, verse 12? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, that's bright star, Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? That's bright star or morning star, if you would. That's who they're worshiping. 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit up, uh, also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I'm going to take God's congregation right away from me. Do you know something? He's doing a good job of getting it done. Ninety percent is a big number. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the Most High. I'm going to play God. Fifteen. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You don't want to serve a dead man, friends. I mean, he is a loser. You may be a loser part of the time on earth, but don't cast your future with a loser because he's a loser all the way. 16, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? This miserable wretch, is he the one that brought all this to pass? And that's all he is. Now, I want you to go back to verse 26 of Amos 5. I want you to understand that real good because that's where the message is. I want you to know just a few things about it. First off, the word Kayan, the only difference between that and Cain's name in the Hebrew 
is a cough and a quaff. And that may not mean much to some of you, but it means they use a K instead of a Q. But it has the same sound. And if you're going to get to the offspring of Satan, then it's not too hard to figure that one out. But most of all, do you know what it means to the Babylonians? Saturn. I said Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. Well, why is it the sixth planet from the sun? Because God put it there. That's why. Because it's got Satan's number all over it. And this word tabernacle, do, do you know what it is in the, in the Babylonian tongue? Let me just give you some facts. It is spelled in the Septuagint and other ancient manuscripts, S-A-K-K-U-T-H. And a lot of people say, oh, they mixed it up with sukkut, the Hebrew word for booth. Uh Uh-uh. And the name Kayan, how did it get Rathan in Acts 7.43? Because Kayawan, K-A-I-W-A-N. Hey, you may say, well, what about those names? Hey, punch it up on the, do a Google search. You'd be shocked. They're both Babylonian names for the planet, for the planet Saturn. Okay. And you're worshiping your star god, the king of Saturn, Satan. Okay. And, have you ever heard of the star of Lucifer, or, or what kind of star do they call it? It's not our five-pointed star. Do a little research. Get educated. What God is telling you, they're worshiping the planet Saturn, or you should the, uh, the king of it, and it's none other than Lucifer himself. An evil, evil planet. Well, why do you say it? Because the Word of God says it. It's not some daydream that some astrologer has written down. That's Amos 5 you're reading there. Now, being the sixth from the sun, Sukkot is the word tabernacle in that verse 26, okay, in the Babylonian tongue. And the word kayan, which if we were to use quat, Instead of cough, you'd be saying Cain. Okay. Is Saturn. But in that Hebrew, in the um, Babylonian tongue, why did he say you're going to go on past Damascus? And then in, in Acts chapter 7, he said all the way to Babylon. Because we're talking Babel here. And the king of Babylon, which is none other than Satan in the book of Revelation. Now listen to me carefully. Saturn entered from Leo, the constellation Leo. Well, well, what does Leo mean? Leo means the old serpent destroyed in the pouring out of the vials of wrath of God. He left it on 999. Do you want me to repeat that for you? September the 9th, 09. Saturn pulled out of Leo. Do you know what he entered into? He entered into Virgo, which is to say the virgin, the one that brings forth the branch. And there he stands, this being the first full year in Virgo that he stays there, where he will remain until December of 2012. You want me to say that again for you? He remains in Virgo, that's to say the Virgin, until 2012. That is one month or the next month following the next main election. Okay. In 2012. It's also the year and the month that the Mayan calendar ends. A lot of, well, are you saying the world's coming? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying Father is giving us a sign. He didn't put it in some little rag sheet. He put it in the Word of God for you to check it out and to understand that you look up and see the signs. 
And he's showing us something. And he's showing us something that you need to pay strict attention. I'm going to say this all one more time. You that are on the, on the internet, check out S-A-K-K-U-T-H. Check out that star and see, find out it's, it's, it's not our star, it's the star of Satan. And it is the sixth planet from the sun written all over it. And it left Leo, the ninth month, the ninth day, and the ninth year. Do you know what nine is? That's judgment. Judgment is that, what that number means, and it's facing us right in the face. That's what the sign is. So there you have it, that uh, we have that planted planet in Virgo that brings forth Zamak, the branch, in Scripture over and over. And the branch, of course, is Christ, the coming of Messiah. We're living in times that you need to pay attention. The heavens do speak, and the heavens give us sign. Don't make a religion out of it, but when God places it in His Word, undeniably so, then it should catch our attention big time. Okay. In closing, Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Where was this? The great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. That's the zodiac. That's the constellations we were just talking about. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. What was that child? One more verse. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. And he was, but he's coming back. And guess who's there to try to welcome him? None other than the old dragon himself, the serpent, in his own little wagon, the planet, the sign, a sign not given by man, but a sign given by God. And he will be cast out to this earth. And that woman will retreat into the wilderness, and she will be helped there for a little time. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth as Antichrist, that's when he comes, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child, and the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness unto her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half time from the face of the serpent. God always takes care of his own. Don't you ever worry. He always protects. He always takes care. And naturally you know that that three and a half years has been shortened way down to five months. And the serpent cast out of his mouth a flo uh, uh, his mouth water as a flood after the woman that she might cause her to be that it might cause her to be carried away by a flood. There's no way it's going to happen. Our father's in control. Our father's in charge and he lets no more happen than is written. But these are some signs it is real easy to verify what I have said about the planet Saturn. You just need to watch it. We're in perilous times, and the elect remain silent through that time other than salvation and watching. Watch the enemy closely. 
And you'll see some awesome things transpire in this generation. Those are your signs. The heavens speak. They're there. They rain down truth in many languages. And uh, Nidem, what a, what a fantastic language and word. Uh, 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 that is only a gram. You can check that one out on the net and find out who the real star of Satan is. How fascinating. Not hidden, only it takes a little looking. So look up, your Redeemer draweth nigh. Our Heavenly Father is knocking on the door, the door of truth. He is leading us. These are the signs of this time. And what a precious sign they are. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the privilege again of serving you. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us in many ways, both on the earth and from heaven, through the mighty word, Father. And may we always stick to that word of God. If you say it and if you teach it, Father, we're with you. Lead, guide, and direct. Bless. 